Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Gabby. Hello, how are you? I am an empath. I'm a witch. I'm a star seed. I'm a light worker. I'm a student. I'm a teacher. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a wife. I'm a sister. No matter how I identify myself as, I'm just a frequency named Gabby in this human 3D meat stack. <laughs> I'm just another soul that heard the call and I volunteered to come here to Gaia to come and find my soul group and help guide my soul fam and myself to wake up to remember and help guide them through this ascension that we're currently going through and to help guide them through these energy shifts that we're all experiencing to go through this beautiful awakening that is taking place right now. I'm also here to download you and everyone that is watching this channel with my light codes my specific light codes, these Gabby codes. <laughs> I don't just exist, you guys. I'm here for a purpose. We are all here for a purpose, and my purpose is life. Life on Gaia at this time, at this point of time, in space, at this moment, right now, right here, at the end of this eon, as we enter the new earth, as we enter the golden age. My physical body, this meat sack that you're looking at me in, this vessel, this beautiful vessel, <laughs> may not last to see the golden age, not with this blonde hair, these green eyes, this pale skin. I may come back into earth in my soul may come back down to earth and and see the golden age as something else maybe i'll be a cat who knows but my soul will see this golden age but i have to keep reincarnating and reincarnating and reincarnating so i can keep spreading my light codes so i've volunteered to come here for a very very long time maybe just maybe, because we don't know this, but maybe I will be in this body. Maybe this body will integrate the light and, you know, these crystalline fragments that I see in my skin glowing and dancing around. Maybe, just maybe it's going to do something to, to this mass that you, that you see and make it more lighter. Maybe it'll last longer. So maybe I will see the golden age at looking like this, just glowing. Who knows? nobody knows so yeah i'm here again another lifetime <laughs> to learn and grow and teach and heal so that is why i'm here not only to spread my light to you guys but also i'm here because i still need to learn i still need to grow and as i learn and grow i can teach so welcome to my channel many blessings to everybody that's watching much love and lots and lots of light spread the love you guys spread the light Mwah! welcome so talking about all these light codes and energies and reincarnating and glowing and integrating and, and crystalline body and 3d mass 4d 5d all that stuff I would like to talk to you guys today about how to raise your frequency and increase your vibration because all of that is important as we integrate the light. All of that is important as we grow, as we wake up, and as we go through these ascension shifts, as we go through the mutation process. Because if you have low frequency and you go through these ascension shifts, you're going to feel shitty, okay? So if you can raise your vibration, raise your frequency, you'll be able to go through these ascension shifts with less pain, less emotional torture. <laughs> Not really torture, but you'll be able to integrate the light 
with ease. It won't be so, oh, it won't be so harsh on you because as we go through these shifts, they can get pretty tough on us. And a lot of us has, has been going through these shifts ever since we were young. I'm talking like little, like little kids. Some of us were born going through these ascension shifts um, little by little, integrating the light. And we've been able to, um, you know, get these updates, these DNA updates and these cosmic updates and shifts ever since we were little. So we were able to, I'm looking for the word, we were able to um, acclimate to the change, adapt to the changes. Now, there are some beings right now that have never experienced an ascension shift. They've they don't experience the aches and pains, the headaches, the dizzy spells, the um, the feelings of being very tired, or you know, the feeling of getting sick. And you know, and if they do get sick and they do get tired and they do get these dizzy headaches and, and all these weird symptoms, they don't think that it's the ascension. They chalk it up to something else, like they're not feeling well, they're overworked, they're stressed, all these other things. But you know, maybe those people are not overworked. Maybe they're not stressed, you know, and they just can't figure it out. They've seen doctors. They don't know what's going on. The doctor keeps telling them, you're fine. You're good. So the doctors are diagnosing these people with anxiety or causing them to have anxiety or diagnosing them with, you know, fibromyalgia because fibromyalgia is a dis-ease. It's not a disease. It's a dis-ease. It's something that's going on with the human body that nobody can explain. The doctor cannot dis explain. So the doctor says, you have fibromyalgia. All these things that are happening, all these side effects and symptoms that you're having is due to this disease called fibromyalgia. And there's nothing we could do for you. You just got to live with it. No, you don't. You don't got to live with it. This fibromyalgia that people have is not because there's something wrong with you. Um, I mean, I could go into this and talk about this all day, but I just I want to sum this up really quick because there's so many things that could go into fibromyalgia to make it to make it fibromyalgia to make it this dis ease. Okay, it's what you eat, it's how you treat your body, it's what you're doing in a day, it's how you think. So. As you go through these ascension shifts, your your all this energy is hitting you, and in and, and a lot of you have not been able. A lot of you have not. Um, a lot of you have not been um, gradually going through these shifts. It's just hitting you all at once. It's it's not subtle for you guys, okay? Because everybody is going through this shift no matter what this year 2018 by 2019 everybody is going through the shift so the people that have not been experiencing these shifts it's going to hit them really really hard okay um i'm kind of side note stepping off and my my the information that's coming into my head is coming in so fast and my mouth cannot say exactly what's coming in because when i get these messages as they come in it's, I, I see words, I see pictures. It's kind of like when you're channeling and, and all these frequencies are coming in, it's like they're telling me what to tell you, but it's so fast. And then I find that I'm speaking fast and using my hands because I want you to understand. <laughs> um, but I kind of, I feel like I'm off track here. So like, as you go through these ascension ships, some people that are that know that they're going through these shifts they know what to expect so the people that don't know what to expect they're getting diagnosed with with certain diseases disease they're not really diseases so all of those diseases can go away if you just acknowledge that you're going through these shifts okay and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and if I don't take care of myself as I go through these shifts, I get all the symptoms that a normal, that a, an, a person would get, not normal, but a person would get that has fibromyalgia. So my body hurts really bad. All my joints hurt really bad. My back hurts really bad. I get the dizzy feeling like vertigo. Um, sometimes I'm very hungry. Sometimes I'm not hungry at all. I get 
massive migraines. I, um, uh, I'm very sensitive to the, um, I'm very sensitive to, uh, for some reason, it's like all my words are gone. Like I cannot, like I can see the word, but it's like, I can't say the word. Um, I'm sensitive to weather. That's not the word I'm looking for. Not, uh, what's the word? The elements, the elements. Sensitive to the elements. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, very sensitive to cold weather. Um, when it's cold, I'm freezing. When it's hot, I can't function. I'm only good in weather that is not too hot, not too cold, okay? Um, some people with fibromyalgia, there's just so many symptoms that they have. They're very sensitive to the touch of their skin. And, and I've had that. Just yesterday I had it, but yesterday I went through a wave. And when I go through waves, I know that I'm going through a wave and I just, you know, meditate, take care of myself. I drink lots of water. I eat clean. Uh, I tried to do vegan, but then uh, I meditated on it. And sometimes we need, and I'm sorry if you're a person that doesn't eat meat and and you're probably thinking I'm such a hateful, hateful person, but listen, I listen to my body. If your body is telling you to be a vegan, then you be a vegan, okay? So you need, because we're not all the same. My body tells me what to eat. Sometimes I don't eat meat. Sometimes I do eat meat. I cannot eat pork. Pork makes me sick, but sometimes I do eat it, but not a lot of it. Like I like bacon, but I don't like anything else pork. If I eat anything else pork, I'll get sick. If I eat too much bacon, I'll get sick. Um, red meat, I cut down a lot on red meat. Red meat will also make me sick if I eat too much of it. But I've been months without eating it, and then my body craved it, so I ate it. Um, chicken, there was a time when I was just eating chicken every single day, and then there was a time I don't eat chicken at all. Sometimes I eat just lettuce and nuts and uh, fruits, stuff like that, and water. And sometimes I like to eat some potato chips and eat a Snickers bar, you know? Yeah, I just eat whatever. I'm not very strict on myself, but I am very cautious. I cut down on sugar, even though I just said I eat a Snickers bar, but I don't, uh, I try not to eat anything too sugary. I, I'm, I'm not a big sugar fanatic anyways. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. I like to drink my coffee. I will not give up my coffee. Doesn't mean I'm a demon. I just like coffee, okay? I am living on a 3D planet and I've I've learned or uh, liked <laughs> some of the 3D foods it has to offer and coffee is one of them and I'm sorry, I just like coffee. I, I had a friend that somebody demonized her because she likes coffee and they basically talked a lot of crap about her because she drinks coffee, but she also spreads this wisdom of the light and they're saying that she's contradicting herself, which is totally ridiculous, you guys. We live on earth. We're going to have some of these earthly things, you know, that we do and live the lifestyle because that's the reality it is. Now, it is what it is. So yeah, so, you know, you just have to take care of your body. So a lot of the, um, the diseases that you're being diagnosed with are actually diseases. If you actually take care of yourself, you change your lifestyle a little bit, you those fibromyalgia symptoms will subside and may even just go away completely. Um, I noticed that if I am not taking care of myself and a wave comes through, those fibromyalgia symptoms, fibromyalgia symptoms, they will hit me very hard. But um, if I... I'm very cautious of what I'm drinking and eating and exercising. I have no symptoms at all. And you guys, check it out. I've been slacking on how I take care of myself. And even though I'm preaching about it, yeah, I'm only human. I got caught up in being lazy and binge watching TV and being bored. You know, this one wave hit me so hard that I, I went through this phase and it started in June where I was up and down like a roller coaster. And I, I, I started even questioning me. Who am I? Why am I really here? Even though I know who I am and I talk about it, I make videos about it, I had a depression. And I started to 
believe that when I die, I'm dead. Why am I really here? I'm not working at the nine to five. I'm a loser as a human. I'm not making the money that I used to when I was in the corporate world. And, you know, I, I just started to be really hard on myself and down on myself. I lost the faith. Um, I even, I had a, a, a conversation with the universe and I got mad because my DNA is still locked. And, and then I was meditating and nothing was coming through. I felt like spirit abandoned me. Um, the orbs, they haven't showed up in, in a year, almost a year. I haven't seen my orb buddies and they were always here. Always. I could see them all the time. And then I don't know, you know, I, I started to change. I started to do my exercises again my cardio exercises. Um, I started to do these positive mantras in the morning time before I get out of bed. I smile. I might look crazy, but I smile, like really smile, like really like cheesy, like, <laughs> and you could feel all your muscles in the morning. Cause you know, you're, everything's tight and tired and you just wake up. And I tell myself today is going to be a good day. And little by little, my day started changing and my attitude started changing and I, i'm starting to feel better again and i'm making a video again you know i haven't made a video for a while because i was feeling like mm, like like i didn't want to do anything so you know um getting outside in nature helps you know and i'm always telling people go outside when you're feeling when your energy is low and your frequency is low go outside meditate sit by the water i live by the water and um I have to push myself to do these things sometimes, you know, I, and I, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm only human. And, you know, these shifts, they really get to me too. You know, I, I'm no different than you. So I thought, let me do this video. Let me talk about frequency because not only is this video going to help you, it's going to help me too. You know, this, this, this video is like, is, is, a uh, sort of like a mantra for me, if that makes any sense for you guys. It, it helps me. It's kind of like um, when you go to counseling and you talk talk to somebody to, you know, work out your problems and your issues and get through it. Well, making these videos is kind of similar to going to a counselor and working out my problems and making myself feel better. I feel like I just totally jumped off subject from the fibromyalgia. Like I said, this information is coming in so fast. And if I'm speaking fast, I apologize. I'm just trying to keep up because as the information comes in from them, from spirit, from source, it's like, it's fast. It, only the people that channel would probably understand this for the normal everyday people that are just waking up to this whole this different world of light is probably like this girl is fucking whack click and they get off my channel but that's okay okay because i'm not going to resonate for everybody if if i'm resonating right now with you then you were guided to come here to watch this if you click if you've clicked off of this right now you are not you, you don't even know what I'm about to say next and you're gone. Bye. And, and I totally agree. I'm not for everybody and everybody's not for me. So if I'm talking really fast, you guys, again, I apologize. Um, I'm channeling this from another source from my higher self, from my guides. And it's more than one of them. It's like I get information from, or information is actually coming in from different um, beings. It's like, they're all here to help. And they're all trying to over talk each other because they all want to get the information to me and out to you. And as it comes in, it comes in like I can hear like in my head, I can hear their voice. Not like you can hear my voice. It's, it's a little different. It's like hearing your thoughts. I, I can see the words and they're, they show me pictures. So, and it's all coming in flashes and it's really fast and it's like, I got to try to remember this from each one that's giving me the information to blurt it out to you as fast as I can. And it just, it, I don't know. I'm, it's, it's really hard to keep up. So I'm trying and I'm suddenly starting to shiver. I just wanted to document this as I'm making this video. It's like, 
I feel shivery right now. It's like, ugh, like shivers. It's weird. My whole body is actually trembling. It's part of the process, you guys. It's part of what's happening. It's part of what's going on. This is okay. This is, this is, this is normal. Nothing's normal. But if you're going through this process, that's normal. Anyways, let's get going. Let's get into why I made this video today. And the whole point of all of this was to talk to you guys and um, just talk about how to raise your frequency and your vibration because I let mine go and my frequency changed and my life was a little crummy for a while. My attitude on everything was like, I don't care. I don't care about anything. Like, I just wanted to just get it over with already. Like, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. That was my attitude. And I don't know when it started. Well, I mean, I know when it started. It started in June. But I mean, like, some of these shifts hit you so hard. It just changes everything. Everything. Everything mentally and physically and emotionally. It's, you got to be prepared, you guys. You've got to be prepared. It's like training for anything, like training for a boxing match or a, 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 like a 10K run or something. You got to train yourself. You got to be focused. So one of those things that you have to do to be focused is to raise your frequency. Raising your frequency, raising your vibration. And it's actually so simple to do. You just have to be consistent. Um, you have to be conscious. Okay. Consciousness and frequency go hand in hand with each other. Consciousness is the state of being awake and aware of your surroundings. Be awake and aware of your surroundings, being conscious. Okay. Frequency is the rate at which vibration occurs that constitutes a wave. Okay. It can be in a material as in sound, sound waves, or in an electromagnetic field as in radio waves and light waves. We beings, us humans, all of us beings all have an energy field around us. And I can show it to you guys. So let me put my in. It's kind of hard because I have that window behind me. Okay, can you see my energy field around me? You can see it around you too. It's like a white, glowy, misty. Maybe you can see it around my head. If you stand behind, if you stand in front of a white wall and you record yourself, put the camera in front of you, turn the flash, the light on, on your camera or your phone or whatever, and record yourself. And, you know, record yourself for about three minutes. And you can see your auric field around you. You might even see colors around you. Just try it. It's pretty awesome. So we beings all have an energy field around us. This energy, this energetic field is called the aura. And the aura connects us to all other living beings and to the universe. So it's very, it's very important that you keep your energetic field protected and, and clean. That's why I'm always telling people that you should sage. You could sage yourself, not just your house. When I sage my house, I like to sage myself. You know, I can, I go like this with the stick around me and sometimes I'll put it in a bowl and I'll just give myself a sage bath, you know, with smoke. And I, I clear my whole body with it, my, my aura, I clean it. I also take a Epsom salt bath. You can do that with Himalayan salt, black salt, but not table salt. Table salt is toxic. Himalayan, Epsom salt, black salt, stuff like that. Our energy is our life. Energy is life. Energy is life. Say that to yourself. Say it out loud. Energy is life. It is also a magnet. It attracts. It attracts experiences in the world to match our energetic field. When you're in a low frequency, you're in a decreased state of consciousness and your perception is limited. You don't want your energy to be low, okay? Because when your energy is low, your frequency is decreased and decreased means bad. 
perception is important in in a physical form like in 3d form like the the way we see people as a human you know perception can be deceiving okay but spiritually when our higher selves are um or when we're using our perception spiritually when our higher selves are guiding us usually it's 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 a way to protect you it's a way to guide you but if your frequency is low your perception will deceive you so you don't want your frequency to be low because you need your perception to guide you correctly and safely perception is the ability to see or hear or become aware of something through your senses so when you're in a high frequency which is good which is a positive thing you're in an increased state of consciousness and your perception is heightened and that's a good thing the lower your vibrational frequency is the less you are able to comprehend because your ego is restricting the flow of life force and source energy sometimes your ego can be a pain in the ass but we need ego ego is also a good thing it's not always just a bad thing now the lower your vibrational frequency is the less you're able to comprehend because your ego is restricting the flow of life force and source energy it's also restricting the flow of intuition and love through your body and your mind and your soul ego now ego is this this word that people in the metaphysical world use all the time and a lot of them they they make ego out to be this bad thing and it's really not a bad thing it's actually it's a balance and you need a balance in life so ego is kind of like is your balance but you have to find your balance for your ego to work well with you ego is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance and sometimes people have a high self-esteem sometimes people have a low self-esteem you have to learn how to balance your ego your ego serves a very very important spiritual role it gives us distinct personal identity without your ego you have no identity it's very common for some spiritual people to consider having an ego as a negative thing but the truth is ego is not negative thoughts based in fear are negative ego is just ego it's not negative and it's not positive it's just ego we need ego to align and live in a balanced life what you think determines whether you are aligning with the negative or positive it's the structure in your brain that gives a person's identity now life force life force is you you are life force your life force is you now source energy source energy is different for many people um source energy could be your creator source energy could be god intuition intuition is the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning a lot of the times your intuition is that little gut feeling that you have telling you when something's just not right the higher your vibrational frequency is the more you're able to comprehend because you're allowing a greater form of the life force a greater form of you through your mind and your body holding a high vibration and radiating love unconditional and non-judgmental love raises the consciousness of all those who come into contact with you with your life force your energy fields your emotions are a biochemical feedback system your emotions are created to reflect to you at all moments throughout the day to keep you updated of what your vibration is sometimes you can even check in with yourself and ask yourself what do i feel right now what is my what is my vibration what's going on with me right now you could just do a body scan a body check you you know you quiet your mind for a second you've been going all day ah, da, 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 and everything's going crazy you could stop 
for two seconds and just ask yourself, where am I right now? What is my vibration? What am I feeling? Why am I feeling like this? How can I change it? Sometimes it's very simple. You could just stop, ask yourself, take a couple big deep breaths, shake it all out, <sighs> smile, quiet your mind for a moment, boom. Just like that, you can raise your vibration. You can think of vibration in terms of, ne of negative and positive because there are billions and billions of frequencies in those ranges. But, 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 it's important that you are able to distinguish what negative and positive vibrations are. That's why you need to ask yourself. You have to check in with yourself. Just like I just said, check in with yourself. Be conscious of what you feel throughout the day. That's important to do that. It's, it's, it's self-awareness. You can determine what is a negative or a positive vibration by how you feel. If you feel an emotion that does not feel good, that is a low or a negative vibration. If you feel an emotion that feels good, that is that is a biochemical indication that you're in a high vibration or a positive vibration. And only you really know what you feel because you are you. I can't look at you and, well, maybe I could look at you because a lot of empaths can do that. But in reality, in all actuality, um, only you know what you feel because you are you. And you have to ask yourself, you have to be aware, self-awareness. You have to ask yourself, what do I feel right now? What creates emotion? What makes us feel? What makes us feel thoughts? Your emotions reflect your thoughts. That's why it's also important to watch your thoughts. Think before you think. Do you, do you, do you, do you understand? Think before you think. Don't let that thought create itself. If it's not a positive thought or if it's not a pleasant thought if it's not a thought that if it's a thought that's gonna make you feel really crummy don't let that thought don't release it just get rid of it and replace it with a good one because your emotions reflect your thoughts and thoughts are a vibration everything is a vibration your thoughts are vibrations that's why it's very very important to watch your thoughts be conscious of your thinking, you guys. Check in. Be self-aware. Think before you speak. We want to think about what thoughts we are thinking about that cause us to feel good or not so good. If you want to increase your vibration, you have to choose thoughts that make you feel emotionally good. Nothing is more important than the thoughts that you are thinking or paying attention to or focusing on. This is what enables a person to maintain and hold a, a super high frequency. While interacting with people who hold a um, very low frequency, you cannot focus on things that cause, that cause you to feel bad and hold a a high vibration. You must focus on things that cause you to feel good to hold a high vibration. Okay? You can't think bad things and still have a high frequency. It doesn't work like that. There's a balance. Have you ever heard of the saying, misery loves company? Well, have you ever heard of the saying, misery loves company? Well, there you go. Perfect example. Your vibe attracts your tribe. We are all magnets. We attract. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Your vibe attracts your tribe. <laughs> Just remember that, you guys. Your vibe attracts your tribe. I remember when I was little, and my parents would say something like, I don't like so-and-so, blah, 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 you know, because that person is blah, 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 that's a bad person. And I would say things like, I don't understand. I don't care what so-and-so does. You know, that's not me. I'm not so-and-so. 
you know, just because that person does that or things like that or whatever, you know, in a low negative, blah, 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 doesn't mean that I'm going to be that. I never understood how my parents could judge me by the people I hung out with. Now I totally get it. It's true. You may be a good person, a positive person, a high vibrational person. And some of your friends may be very, very low energy, very low vibration, very negative, very bad, in a sense. And, you know, in the beginning, you may have a higher standard of doing things and, and you know, keep your vibration high. But little by little, people with a low vibration will chop you down. It may take time but they will chop you down. They will lower your vibration. They will take from you. They will drain from you. And eventually you will be misery with your best friend or whoever it is that is misery that you've been hanging out with. You will eventually be misery. I get it. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Eventually you will become part of their tribe. I get it. And now that I'm a mother, you know, I have these same conversations with my daughter, but now I kind of explain it to her a little bit differently about how your vibe attracts your tribe. And, you know, she gets it. I think she gets it. Um, but sometimes I, I feel like if you can just vibe high enough, maybe your tribe, your vibe will attract to your tribe. Your vibe will attract them to your tribe. And I think maybe that's what I was trying to tell my parents when I was younger, but just because I was young and, you know, dumb, <laughs> and I was just like, you know, like a little rebel, you know, I, I liked their tribe. And, you know, over time, it took me a lot of time, but um, I came back over to my tribe. I made my own tribe and I walked with my own people's even if it's just a couple, I'd rather walk with, I'd rather walk alone, actually. I'd rather walk alone in a higher frequency than to walk with a crowd of people that have a low vibration. So a little side note here. When you're around low vibrational people or in a low vibrational situation, it's very important to learn to ground yourself. It's important so you can protect your energy. You know, it's important that you protect your energy from low vibrational um, situations, from the life around you, from people around you. You cannot allow negative energy to penetrate the rainbow, the rainbow wall around you or, you know, whatever color wall that you surround yourself with. Okay, so... You know, we're talking about energy and frequency and the exchange of it and how to, you know, live in a higher frequency and, you know, how bad it is to be in a low frequency, stuff like that. I want to give you guys a little example. I want to share something with you guys that really changed my outlook about, you know, um, energy and ego and um, balance. This is my perception of, uh, of an energy exchange that people that I feel other people can, can learn from. So <clears throat> energy is so important, you guys. And it's so important to always have this high, high energy or this high frequency. So let's say that you have a loved one or a friend or a loved one that is in the hospital who is very sick and they're dying. Hospitals are normally 95% negative. I feel that they're 95% negative. They're they're very low. For me, it's a very low vibrational place. I do not feel that a hospital is a healing place. I don't feel positive energy in a hospital. I just feel low. Like it's it's full of low energy, low frequency, um, low vibrational frequency. People are sick. They're dying. They're getting bad news. The, you know, they're going through stuff that that can cause them pain physically and mentally. You know, there's always um, there's always issues in a hospital. Insurance crap. You know, giving people a hard time. Rarely is the hospital a happy place. 
you know, it's never really a happy place for people unless, you know, you get good news. You're granted with some like really positive, great news or somebody's having birth, you know, giving birth, a baby is born. That's usually a good thing. If you have a loved one who's not well and is at, and is in the hospital, just know that you're doing absolutely no good for that person. If you walk into their hospital room focused on the injustice that, you know, maybe the insurance company is putting them through, um, or if you walk into their room and you're focused on, you know, their poor state of health or their illness or the deep suffering that they're experiencing. You're not doing any good for that person if your vibration, if your frequency is low and you're focused on the bad reason of why they're laying in that bed. When you do this, you are not practicing unconditional love for them. You know, some of you guys may be thinking like, this is absurd. Why are you saying this? <laughs> you know, when somebody's sick, you are you feel sad for them and you're having emotion. Oh my God, Gabby's heartless. No, just listen. You're focused negatively towards them in their situation and you don't want to do that. When you do this, not only are you not caring to their health, but you're also not being, you're not able to be very present for them which is what you know which is what they really need from you when they're in a low vibration they need you to be present for them they don't need the extra the extra sadness the extra worrying that not only are they going through this illness this transition whatever the case may be this low negative situation that they're in now they're worried about you and how it makes you feel. And I don't ever remember dying or going through a transition, but I've been in the hospital hurt and I've seen the worry on loved ones' faces when I was hurt. And I'm, I'm talking to my guides like, oh God, please get me through this. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. But then when I look over and I see somebody worried and scared for me, that makes me worried and scared. I don't want that. I don't want to make you worried or scared. I need you. I need you to be supportive and helpful and loving and present for me. I need you to have faith that I'm going to get through this. I need you to have faith to guide me through this. That loved one, they need you to be totally present. They need you to be reflecting unconditional love and positive they need to see what positive looks like. They need to see and feel what unconditional love looks like. They need your support. They need love. Raise your vibration. Remember, we are magnets. We're magnets. You are a magnet. So if you walk into a hospital room where someone is suffering and you focus on their suffering instead of their wellness, my frequency will immediately decrease. So what I should do instead, or what you should do instead, is to walk into that room where your loved one is laying down in the hospital and focus vision, focus on them, have a vision of them in your head, in your, in your mind, of them in a perfect state of health. Envision them healthy. Envision them healing. Focus on anything that would bring them more relief. Focus on love. Focus on the truth. The truth is we are eternal beings who are powerful because we are powerful creators. And I would focus on how good it feels to hold someone's hand as they make their transition into death while looking into their eyes and telling them without words that there is nothing to be afraid of and that they are not alone. By doing this, you are being fully present for them. You are offering them unconditional love and energy with a higher vibration 
of focus. And their transition will be much, much more smoother. And you will feel that energy exchange. You will feel better. I know that, you know, seeing somebody that you love in the hospital can be very sad. I used to work in, um, as a PCA when I was in my 20s, um, taking care of uh, patients that had, or people that had Alzheimer's and um, dementia. And death for years scared me. I was, I still am scared, but I used to be very scared. Like I would have anxiety attacks and I took a job and people transitioned and died all the time. And I remember seeing my first dead body. I remember seeing um, the way families, the looks on their faces when they enter a room seeing, you know, their loved one passing or transitioning or, you know, already transitioned. And it would always break my heart and I would cry. And, you know, I eventually left that job because it was just heartbreaking. Um, I wish I knew then what I know now, but I think unconsciously a piece of me kind of did know because there, there was a woman that had children, but her children never ever visited her. I guess when she was well, she, the rumor was that she was a very mean woman and her children didn't very care very much for her. And that broke my heart. And, um, she was religious. She was Catholic. And she had this little tiny Bible and she had these rosary beads. So the hospice aide said, you know, why are you talking to her? She can't hear you. She's dying. I was just like, so I thought she was so heartless. I thought it was so messed up that, you know, she, she didn't even care for this woman. She just like put these, um, cold cloths on the lady's head and under her armpits and stuff. And just was like, she's dying. That's it. There's nothing you can do for her. And I just thought that was just so cold and heartless. So on my break, I would go into the room, to the rooms of people that were transitioning and I would sit with them. And this one woman, I would sit with her and I would, she had, it was a daily Bible and I, I read to her, you know, the, her daily Bible and I put her rosary bead. I'm not a religious person, but I know that Catholics like to hold their beads. So I, I put her beads in her hand and I wrapped them around her hand and I held it, I held her hand like this and I read her daily Bible. And every time I said, Hail Mary, she squeezed my hands. She could hear me. She heard me. She heard me. And, um, and I just like said these little prayers for her. And I, I just, I, I imagined her, you know, seeing the light and being happy. And I was happy for her and she transitioned. And that was the first time I experienced somebody's last breath. And I felt, I, I felt sad, but it wasn't like, I felt, um, heartbroken, sad. I just, but I, I felt something, but it wasn't really like sad. It was like, I, this energy exchange of an appreciate, it was love. That's what I felt. I felt love. It was just energy exchange. And it was like her spirit's way of telling my spirit. Thank you. And it was, it was, it was a beautiful thing. That's what it was. Like I mentioned, I feared death for so many years and, you know, I still do have these um, little tiny attacks, but I, I know that I'm an infinite being and I still have to remind myself that I am an eternal being. I have, I, I just, I just fear the unknown. I mean, like who doesn't? I do. And by living a higher vibrational life, it makes those low vibrational thoughts that create fear kind of like go away. So that's another reason why it's important to raise your frequency and, you know, live in a higher um, vibration because if you, if you don't, you know, it will create fear and fear will, fear, fear will destroy you. It will tear you down, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well. If you're currently focused on negative thoughts, you guys, the best thing that you could do is to meditate. I know that that sounds a bit cliche. 
I have a lot of friends that do tell me all the time that they don't know how to meditate, but honestly, it's not that hard. It's about being in the moment. You know, you just close your eyes and uh, take a deep breath and just be in the moment. Think about, um, not think, but just close your eyes, take a breath and just be in the moment. What do you hear? What do you feel? Are you hot? Are you cold? Are you just right? Um, does your feet, does, does your skin feel tingly? Do your feet feel warm? I don't know. What do you feel? What do you hear? What are the noises that you hear around you? Do you hear, hear a humming in the earth? Do you hear the birds singing? Do you hear um, cars going by? Do you hear the droplets of water dripping out of your faucet? I mean, like, what do you hear? Do you hear your furnace going on? Do you have a fan in the background blowing? Do you hear the fan? Um, what do you smell? Do you smell flowers around you? Um, your fabric softener from just doing your laundry? I mean, I don't know. What do you smell? Do you smell the perfume that you put on today or the, the shampoo that you used in your hair? Um, how does your body feel? You know, it's just, it's just being in the moment. Take 10 to 15 deep breaths. Don't overdo it. Don't, you know, don't do it where you make yourself feel dizzy, like you're going to pass out. You know, if it only, if you can only do five, then just do five. I like to just be anywhere. I, I, I meditate. I don't do it the way like a monk does it. You know, you don't have to be on a mountaintop under, you know, the sun or whatever, um, or on a beach. I mean, you could literally meditate going to bed at night. You can meditate anywhere and you can do it any way that makes you feel comfortable. And for me, I just like to, I like to do different, different stuff. But I mean, the most simplest thing is just close your eyes and take a deep breath or a few deep breaths. Like I mentioned, 10 to 15, if you can't do 10 to 15, cause it makes you feel like you're going to pass out or dizzy, then, you know, just do five or two or one, whatever. And, you know, just relax and like I said feel what's going on around you what's going on in, in this moment that's happening right now and sometimes I like to place my hand over my heart oh, it's really down here and I, like, I just like to feel my heartbeat sometimes my heartbeat calms me even when I'm having an anxiety attack and it's beating really fast I I like to like just to feel it and you can even feel your pulse in your neck and and just feel it and for me, it's just a reminder, I'm alive, I'm okay, my heart is beating. And the more breaths that you take in and out, in and out, your heartbeat will slow down. It will calm itself. Your body will calm itself. And, you know, I just thank my heart for beating. I thank it for, for putting up with me and, and giving me another day. My heart, my soul lives inside my heart. It's in that little organ in my body that's being carried around by this vessel. When we're meditating, we're, all we're doing is stopping thoughts. We're just stopping the thoughts. The thoughts may come in, but don't invest in the thought. Just when the thought comes in, like that I do the laundry, just be like, Shoo. I'm going to talk about that right now. I'm just going to close my eyes and breathe. And then another thought may come through and be like, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? And before it crosses your whole mind, you just be like, nope, not right now. Shoo. Swipe it away. Don't invest in the thoughts. Just they're, they're going to come. And when they do, you just swipe it away. And, and you just listen to the leaves rustling on the trees or the fan blowing or whatever else that's happening in this moment. Don't worry about what's going on later or what's going to happen later. Just worry about the moment. You know, don't, don't invest in the thoughts. Meditating, you guys, is really not that hard. It's, it's actually quite simple. Alternatively, we just... Step into what's called the observing mind. That is without judgment, without criticizing your thoughts. You just sit there and you remove yourself from, from all your thoughts. And you kind of just observe them, like I just said. Now, when you observe something without judgment, what you are what you're doing is looking at the thought. You're not really investing in it. You just, you kind of like look at it, like how I just mentioned, like when you're meditating and you're wondering what you're going to have for dinner tonight. And you know, this little motion that I did like this, and then I said, swipe, <laughs> that was the thought creeping in, you know, that's the thought 
you're not really investing in it you don't want to invest in it and you know because when we invest in a thought what we're doing is attaching the idea of it uh being true or untrue when you're watching your thoughts it's it's not about whether they are true or not true they're just thoughts okay so when you're meditating you're just they're just thoughts you don't want to invest in it and the more and more that you meditate the better you'll get at it and i don't want you to focus too much on the intention of how do you meditate because it will just lower your frequency it will lower your vibration because it will make you frustrated and you don't want that alternatively we can step into what's called you know the observing mind that is without judgment without criticizing your thoughts you just sit there and remove yourself from your thoughts and observe them now when you observe something without judgment what you are doing is you're looking at a thought you're not really investing in it that was that motion that i did when i was talking about the meditating like what am i going to have for dinner tonight and the thought was there you observed it okay but you don't really want to invest in it so you make it go away you just like go away not right now i'm busy i'm meditating i'm being in the now the things that we could do to increase our vibration are literally endless you guys I'm going to give you guys um, a few suggestions as to how to raise your vibrations based on what I'm looking at when I'm watching people you know vibrationally in general <laughs> number one make conscious positive changes in your lifestyle you know in your belief systems and fear and judgments use your intuition on this one you guys listen to that little voice or your gut feeling because you most likely know what kind of things you potentially have to change in your life in order to live a high you know high vibrational or high frequency lifestyle number two music music is one of the most amazing vibrational tools that we all have because it crosses all boundaries <laughs> it's kind um, it kind of sidestepping the ego you know the ego does not resist the high frequency of music it cannot resist the high frequency of music try it i dare you it won't resist it so when you use music you are causing your own vibration to entrain with the frequency of the music that you're listening to so then it's all about you know being really honest about the music that makes you feel really good so if it's crazy rock and roll music that makes you feel good then listen to it if it's country listen to it if it's rap listen to it if it's that rap music that people <laughs> cannot understand anymore and it makes you feel good then listen to it because it's what makes you feel good vibrationally number three spend time near people places or things that hold a high frequency in and of themselves it could be spiritual teachers it could be friends or animals it could be crystals nature is a good example which holds a very high frequency because nature is a state of a non-resistance any time that you're spending time around something with a higher frequency you are being caused to entrain with that frequency number four anything that is inspiring is going to raise your frequency uh maybe a book read a book if books if you like books read books that cause you to feel good about yourself and the world watch movies that make you feel good and inspire you and listen to spiritual teachers that inspire you and cause you to awaken into your own beautiful powerful self number five exercise physical movement not only causes the energy to move through and oxygenate your brain it also stimulates the release of endorphins which are frequency elevating chemicals as witnessed by the way that they move you into joy <laughs> i know the thought of exercising for some people does not make you feel joy 
But when you do actually do exercise and you move your body and you and you start to um, then release those endorphins, after you exercise, you will feel a certain joy. Make sure that you do an exercise that you like doing, like maybe, um, I don't know, whatever you like to do, yoga, swimming, dancing, dancing's fun. Um, it could be anything really, you know. Don't do an exercise that you're not, that you don't like. Um, don't force yourself to do something that you're not going to like because if you do that, then you you will just lower your frequency. So do an exercise that makes you feel happy, that makes you feel good. Number six, aroma or color therapy, just like music that causes you to entrain with the frequency of it. Um, the music the aroma and you know the color therapy it all causes you all of that and causes you to entrain with that frequency you know of whatever you know the ingredients were that went into you know the aroma or the frequency of the the color that you were looking at it all entrains you um, to that frequency number seven you know, write in a journal. It could be a positive aspect or a gratitude journal. This does not necessarily have to be a journal. Um, if you have a difficult time writing or remembering to write, or maybe you, you have arthritis or whatever the case may be, if you have a difficult time, you know, writing, um, I just find that the writing process is a is good at helping you to hold a high frequency because you know the effort it takes to put you know a pen to paper it strengthens the the vibration of you know whatever you're focused on but if you can't do the writing portion of the journaling you know you can definitely uh most phones have the little recorder on there and and you you can journal you voice journal and record yourself you know that also holds frequency as well it doesn't have to be writing it's just the writing portion of it it holds um it holds a certain different frequency, but I mean, you can journal all all kinds of ways. Some people um, use the voice recorder. Some people color. Some people, you, what's that thing when you're taking cut out little things and uh, scrapbooking? Scrap scrapbooking is a way of journaling. You know, it's kind of like a like symbolic way of journaling. Just an idea. It's all energy. Number eight, spend time in water or around water. You know, light is the manifestation of which holds the closest of pure source energy, okay? Now, water is, the, is second to that. Its vibration is so close to pure source energy that any time that you spend time in water or around water, you're going to be resonating in a very close frequency to source. To source itself that's why it feels so good to be in water taking a shower a bath or to sit by water because um, it's associated with it as clearing or cleansing us or clearing or cleansing our energy number nine practice random acts of kindness anytime that you're projecting and radiating love outwards you're in a high vibration it's one of the best things that you can do to increase your vibration service to others not service to self remember that service to others raises your vibration number 10 inquiries questioning learning anytime that you're learning anything spiritual that helps you grow spiritually will bring you to um, higher levels of awareness and will set you, you know, free from the illusions of fear and limits. Question yourself, learn about yourself, learn about spiritual growth. The more that you know yourself and the more you get deeply, you know, introspective, like looking into oneself, the easier it becomes to permanently hold a high vibration. That's why meditating is also good because it helps you learn about yourself. It helps you grow spiritually. Number 11, laugh and smile. Anything that you can do or say or think, watch or be around that causes you to smile is automatically going to increase your vibration. 
laughter is what you can think of as you know the byproduct of increased vibration it is what happens when the increased vibration causes you to discharge some of that positive energy you just you bust out laughing <laughs> so spend time really trying to seek out things that make you smile or laugh and smiling is one of the things that i do when i wake up in the morning i mentioned that at the beginning of this video and that is because i'm raising my vibration i'm starting my day off good you know not only am i getting out of my the right side of my bed i'm doing it with a smile you're really gonna have to just dedicate yourself to happiness okay and prioritize your own personal happiness above everything else if you really really care to raise your frequency if you're dedicated to raise your frequency you can't afford the luxury of a negative thought again you're only human you're gonna have these thoughts positive negative observe invest in it not to invest in it but don't resist it you had a thought it was a bad thought replace it with a good thought you're only human you're not a robot you're not perfect so you know you're gonna have these thoughts and it's gonna take some time to you know live in the lifestyle of you know the light and it's it, just because you are living in the lifestyle of the light in, in a high high frequency um in a positive you know not a negative low vibrational frequency but in a positive high vibrational frequency doesn't mean that you're a saint doesn't mean you're an angel doesn't mean you're gonna you're you're not allowed to have bad days doesn't mean you're not allowed to have bad thoughts and it doesn't mean that you're a demon because you had a bad thought it means you're human and you're working on yourself you're here on earth you're having an, an experience it's a learning experience and you know service to others be kind to yourself be kind to others and you know like i said earlier if you're having these thoughts in your mind you observe them if it's bad don't invest in it don't don't think into it even further because it's going to cause fear that's all that's it you guys it's it's not that serious you know um just raise your vibration and and bottom line is be love love everyone be kind be kind to people be kind to yourself that's that's all it is it's about being kind it's about being love you want to move in the direction of feeling emotionally happy what makes you happy that's the direction you want to move into if something is not making you happy you want to go in the other direction anything that brings you joy will raise your frequency so that's all I got for you guys. I hope I was able to raise your vibration. I hope this video brought a smile to your face. And just remember to be love, be kind to one another. And when you're walking around um, in the grocery store or on the street or when you're driving and you stop at a red light and you happen to look over at the person next to you, send them some light energy, send them some love energy, smile, raise your vibration. That smile will make you happy and that smile will also make them happy. Many blessings to you guys. Lots and lots of love and light.